All right, good evening and welcome to Flow's Seven Words, a week of spiritual emphasis. Flow, which stands for fellowship, love, outreach, and worship, is a ministry for young adults by young adults. We focus on safe spaces for genuine dialogue that will help us grow on our spiritual walk with God and gain a deeper understanding of him. So over the next seven days, we are going to be discussing each night from 7.30 to 8.30, the theme, endurance. So tonight's discussion, we have Robert Harris, Susan Harris, Anderson Regis, Alexia Scott. So um, thank you all so much for joining us. We just wanna have a genuine conversation on the overall theme, endurance, but specifically tonight's word, is persistence. So if before we jump into the conversation, I just want you guys to think a little bit about, you know, what is your walk with Christ like? You know, how are you being persistent and consistent in your walk with Christ? I guess I can go first with that um, and speak from a personal testimony of mine. Um, to be honest, I haven't always been the closest to God. Um, there were times when I felt like I, like I was afraid to, to have, to worship by myself, like to have my personal devotion and things like that. Um, afraid of that type of intimacy. It always had to be with some, with another person. Um, and over time, you know, my relationship with God has evolved, um, especially because of things that I've gone through in life and, um, just, gaining a better understanding of him. And so I would say that persistence for me looks like even when I don't feel like I'm in the mood, um, <laughs> you know, to spend time with God, I continue to to work through that because I want to draw closer to him. And I know that my life is not going to be what it should be or what it could be without him. Okay, so I guess I can um, talk about my uh, journey um, in terms of my spiritual growth with God. It's been, you know, an interesting roller coaster. I think for me, um, I think for me, um, my journey has, in my mind, has been slightly difficult because I would say I was a babe and I was a little bit spoiled in my journey initially. And I think coming to the realization that, you know, you're growing up and things are going to change a little bit. I think I struggled a lot with that initially, but I think for me, persistence is even when I mess up um, and I may, and I know when I mess up and I own up to my, uh, my mess ups, um, I have a thing with God where I don't, it doesn't matter what I've done. I know that he's going to still forgive me and he's going to still open his arms to me. Even when I don't feel him close sometimes, I sometimes will be wrestle with him. And I have a thing where I'm like, it doesn't matter what I've done. You're not leaving by my, you're not leaving my side. Right. So I, it's a fight where I know I messed up, but I'm going to still, I'm going to still seek you. I don't deserve your love, but I want that love. Right. So I think for me over time, it's like Susan said, it's been a development um, process for me and a humbling process um, for me at the same time. So. Um, for me, uh, my walk. <laughs> um, I don't even know how to describe it. It's, it's not, it's difficult in the sense that I want to do what I want to do. Um, it's, <laughs> ah, I'm trying to find the words. My walk hasn't been what I believe it should be. Um, I'm just getting to where I believe um, God is calling me to be um, uh, from the finish line. I'm not from the starting line. Um, just getting where I believe God is want where God is wanting me to be, where I'm more actively studying, where I'm um, choosing instead of pleasure, I'm choosing to like pray or get in my word. Um, that and that's the difficulty for me is when I want to relax, I want to relax. Um, you know, but the pers for me where persistence come in is just simply knowing that I have a goal and just chasing that goal no matter what the obstacle 
is, um, especially me, myself, being that obstacle majority of the times. So right now, my walk is is good, and I pray that it just continues to get better. Man, I appreciate you guys sharing that. Um, as you all see, whoever's choosing to watch us tonight, I am here with Alexia Scott Mitchell, um, Anderson, Ted Regis, my wife, Susan Harris, and we are here to honestly chop it up with you. If you've watched any of our Flow Presents, we ask questions and we seek answers. We believe that your experiences are valid because they're your experience, but we also believe God is the connection through it all. So this entire week, we're gonna explore um, the concept of the word endurance by breaking it down through seven words. And really, there's a question that we wanna explore this week, which is, why do you run? Um, so we're about to play a clip for you, why do you run? And then I'm gonna come back and answer that question about persistence. So watch this video and think to yourself, why is it that you run? We all have to make a decision when we start. Determination. We have to ask ourselves the question, how are we gonna handle the run? Each step matters in a run like this. You gotta make sure that you keep an account. On a journey like this, you gotta know where you're running to. How long do you plan on running? Let's be honest, you gotta know why you're running. Cause it's not for everybody. Not everybody can find the joy in a good, long run. But if you understand why you're running, there's something that develops, something that builds inside of you, run after run, step after step. For me, it's about conditioning. For me, it's about understanding that what is being shaped within me after each step, after each run, is gonna build me up to be better. See, now I'm running faster, I'm running harder, I'm running longer than I ever did. And that's not saying there aren't things that I have to overcome on each run. Sometimes just making the decision to run itself is a challenge. Other times it's conditions on the run. Yeah, conditions can be hard on the run, but that's not the only thing you gotta worry about. You gotta worry about if you're prepared for the run. See, having the right gear matters. You run in the wrong shoes, those shin splints are gonna come a lot earlier than they would if you hadn't. If you're not wearing the right clothes, you can either be too cold on the run or too hot. If you're wearing something that's too heavy, you're just adding on to the stress and the strain of the run. Sometimes you don't even need to because the run itself, yeah, that's gonna build you up. Muscles are being engaged in every step. Yeah, so running is not for everybody because it has challenges. But you gotta understand why you're running. I do. And see, the run is important because it develops you, prepares you, it strengthens you. Your heart with every beat is pumping blood to every portion of your body. But it's not just the physical, it's the mental. See, good runners can focus on their breathing. <sighs> to give you the strength to go up that really big hill. Because, yeah, sometimes there's hills. So, yeah, you got to know why you run. And that's what I want to challenge you all to think about. Why is it that you're running? Have you set yourself up to be prepared for this run? Have you made a determination that will ensure that you're successful on a run like this. So I want you to think about it real carefully. Why is it that you're running? So I hope you have got yourself going, really started to think about why is it that you run? Because if you're a runner, like I, say I can be at times, you know endurance is necessary. But there's so much to deal with when it comes with endurance. And this week, tonight, we are gonna talk about the word that connected to it, which is persistence. And our host, Sandra, asked us all, and um, all of our, my participants, panelists, friends answered already, but for me, persistence and my journey, <laughs> they're one and the same. Uh, I think you all kind of heard it. Sometimes I don't feel like it, to be honest with you. I don't feel like trying to establish this relationship with a, a being that I have yet to kind of 
really wrap my mind around, that ask me to do things that really at times seem contrary to self. But then there are those moments when, you know, God does something for you, right? Or the spirit moves you in a certain way. And you're like, oh, that's, that's what it's about. And that's why I persist. I persist because I've seen things happen in my life and around my life that speak well to the power and nature of God. Um, and so that's why we're here tonight. So all of us, we're going to break open. We're going to talk about the word. We want everyone out there to know that your spiritual journey is one mixed with challenges and strife and requires more of you. Um, but you also can find answers in the word. So everybody, my panelists, let's, let's break it open, right? My first question for us all, what does persistence actually have to do with endurance? All right, whoever feels open, what does persistence have to do with endurance? Oh, we all want to play shot tonight? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. Okay, my bad. Us, you know. um, I struggled with this one. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I struggled with this one. Um, you know, looking up the, the definition of persistence, which is, I had to put it in my own words. It's, it's, it's a willingness to keep going despite internal or external opposition. And then you have endurance, which is just the ability to. Okay. Um, I had uh, a friend of mine put it to me like this. He was just like, you know, Clay Thompson right now is injured. Um, but he's been injured for a while. The requirements for him to, if he was well and getting ready to play, he would have to be able to run at least for those um, 40 something minutes of play, 48 minutes of play, right? That takes endurance. That takes, um, right now, if all he's doing is shooting the ball on the court, but he's not running back and forth, he's not what we consider to be game ready. So for me, um, endurance is simply having the ability to, and God speaks of that, and the, the verse escapes me, but he says he will not give us more than we can bear, which tells us that innately there's endure, we have endurance in us. That's God put that there. Um, there's certain things we can endure. Sometimes we may say, yo, you know what, Lord, that's too much. But understand what he's saying. He's saying if I'm giving it to you or if I'm allowing it to happen to you, you could handle it. So sometimes um, through that, we have to persist in trust in God. And that persistence is d saying despite whatever that external or internal opposition to what's taking place is, we're going to push through run 26.2 miles, um, some folks do. I think that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> to run a marathon, marathon, but some folks do it. Um, I have to believe that not everybody is conditioned to finish that race at some point that um, some people might say willpower, but that persistence to that, that, that willingness to keep going despite the, the pain that their body may feel, despite the hurt, the um, pain that their feet may feel, despite the fact of wanting to pass out, um, that willingness to keep going to me is 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 what this walk is about. We don't always want to do like we said before, but um, like the word said, don't do not be wary of doing good. So, in other words, we do good. We see things happen to. To people we see, and and then we're just like, you know what? I'm tired. I'm tired because we we may get let down, nice. um, you know. But at the same time, do not be wary of doing good. Is God telling us like, yo, persist? Don't 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 stop because you're tired of doing it. Persist because there is a goal that you there's a there's an end there's an end goal. Um, and if we quit, we may just miss that blessing that's on the other side of that. And that's what happens a lot of, a lot of times we go through things and we quit. Mm. Don't persist through that because we don't trust in the endurance that God has given us. If he tells us that he won't give us more than we can bear, but yet these things are coming, it means we can bear it, but we can only bear it with him in mind or with him, um, so I wanted to, um, you know, I, I agree with, with the example that Anderson gave, and I wanted to, um, to also, like, think about um, the idea in my head, you know, as we talk about the whole, the sports thing, endurance for me has to do with stamina, 
Like how much stamina do you have? It's, I think about the way Olympians train um, in high altitudes when, when um, you know, runners train in high altitudes so that they won't, when they get winded, they know how to properly breathe and things like that. And so when I think endurance, I think stamina. When I think persistence, I think, um, you know, not giving up. So like one to me, um, kind of speaks to an exertion of energy. Mm -hmm. That's what I look at with endurance and then with persistence. It's more like, okay, you know, whether I still have the energy or not, how how far am I willing to go? Or am I going to take this the entire way? For me, um, and I agree with, you know, but what you and Anderson are saying, um, I think this is actually a very exciting topic for me. Um, Persistent and endurance. Persistent for me is just like, you're not going to take anything that's happening as something that can deter you. You have a goal in mind. It doesn't matter what's being thrown at you. You have that goal in mind, right? So um, if... I just brought up the whole running thing and uh, you know let me brag on myself a little bit because I did a 10 mile run recently and it was not that I trained for it or anything thank you I didn't train one and done in my life that's it (laughs) Um, (laughs) but um one uh my persistence to one be a, a team player and wanting to you know complete something like this um, I was, you know, cons- whether I'm reaching to God for and ed- for the energy, or I'm trying to get my mind in the right place to finish the race. For me, endure- uh, enduring that race was because in my mind, endurance is like, what am I enduring? It's the pain, it's the the cold, it's the, all the extra elements that are really trying to say this is not working out. You need to stop this. You need to turn around and just give up, right? So endurance for me is like, regardless of the pain that I'm going through or my legs or my knees feeling like, girl, this is a bad idea. I'm going to still do it because I have this deep desire to finish the race. So for me, that's what it means for me is just to finish the race, the desire. How bad do I want it, right? Mm -hmm. So I could be tired, but I'm going to drag myself over to the finish line, right? It's what I'm, what I'm willing to do um, in that space. How do I change the situation in my mind to see, is it a situation that I'm defeated or I can, I can still push through with what I do have, right? So, See, that's it right there. Um, I think I, what I hear from everybody is this idea of like your mindset matters with persistence. We all talked about endurance, kind of like this thing that you, you do, right? Or Susan, you talked about stamina. Um, Alexia, you, you talked about it's the direct connection to persistence, but it, it feels to me that persistence has to do with mindset. And here's what got me what Anderson said, because again, Flo, we're about keeping it a buck all the way. When you talked about how Christ always talks about doing good, right? I thought about that scripture that we all utilize at times when he says, turn the other cheek. Because it does seem like God asks us to do things that are great, that does take a certain mindset to have, that I wonder if it takes a certain level of persistence to to engage in, mm-hmm. right? When you talk about doing good for someone else, when you talk about always oh, trying to put the yeah, I, I, Alexia, go ahead. What are you going to say? What are you going to say just now? Especially if they don't like you or if um, you're not on good terms with them. It's not about, you know, being nice to somebody who you're cool with, but you know, you get some, you get the Holy Spirit tell you to go to this person. You're like, nah, I don't think that's a good idea. But even if, you know, it's not about you in that moment. So you're going to them consistently, like, um, uh, I can't remember this anyways, but essentially it's going to them consistently, even if it's not a favorable situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, one thing, um, that I think about when we're talking about that idea of, of doing um, good for, for people, regardless of who they are, whether they like us or not, um, is the idea that like, you know, Ralph said, you have to know why you're doing it. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> otherwise it could be like, yo, all right, you gonna disrespect me after I just, you know, tried to extend that olive branch or after <laughs> I just tried to do that nice thing for you or whatever. And, and this is how you gonna treat me, all right? You know, like, 
Um, but I think it's really about like knowing why, why, why are you doing it? Mm-hmm. So it, it, it sounds like persist really is the mindset that we established, but I really can, then I got to lay out the groundwork for us then. Right, we, we're saying it's connected to spirituality, right? It's how you get there. It's what gets you to move forward to the things, but how do we get it? How do we get persistent? And let me let me make sure that y'all know um, the young adult, the spiritual leaders at Flow, we don't just talk a big game. We don't talk like we know the word. We actually read scriptures. So I'm going to drop this on y'all, right? This is my answer to the question. Philippians 2, 1 through 11, I believe. Philippians 2, we're not going to read the whole thing though. We talk about that mindset. Um, it says, therefore, if there is any encouragement and comfort in Christ, as there certainly is in abundance, if there is any consolation of love, there is any fellowship that we share in the spirit, if there is any great depth of affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind and having the same love towards one another, knit together in spirit intent on one purpose and having a life that reflects your faith and spreads the gospel, the good news regarding salvation through Christ. Do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but with an attitude of humility, regard others more important than yourselves. The actual, we go to the King James version of that same scripture, right? Verse five says, let this mind be in you, which was Mm -hmm. also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. I think honestly, if you want to consider persisting, you got to have a mind outside of yourself. So what you're saying essentially is that there needs to be a transformation that takes place. Yeah, I feel like it because I don't, I don't, I don't know how much we inherently, when it can, when it comes to spiritual matters, I don't know how persistent we are naturally as human beings. I think even when it comes to good deeds, there's a, mm-hmm. a limit that we all have or experience at some point. That's, that's well, I think as human beings, we're pretty, we're pretty persistent. I mean, I think about my two-year-old son, um, you know, when I go down to the basement and he sees me, he automatically runs and he's like down and he puts his hands up so I can pick him up and take him downstairs. We get downstairs and he runs to the PS4 controller and he, nah. <laughs> you know, he, he presses it and, you know, For me, my intent of going downstairs at that time is just to relax and, you know, play Call of Duty or whatever, just to, you know, sit with myself. I wish you. I wish you. (laughs) But his thing is car, 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 and I will ignore him. And I have the controller in my hand going to Call of Duty, but he's car, car, pop a car, pop a car, 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 until it is that I, you know, say, you know what? I'm going to let you play Need for Speed for like two minutes. <laughs> okay. So his, the, the persistence, I believe it's in us. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it becomes greater when we connect with God. Okay. So I, I think it, it's just like endurance is in us. I think um, we can persist to a certain degree on our own, um, but it, 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 be, it, becomes magnified, just like our our capability to endure, it's magnified um, when we're connected to God. Mm-hmm. I, I agree. I think the source has to be, the source can't be us. Yeah. Because there's nothing that I can do and, and for myself that is going to really aid me in this, you know, race, mm-hmm. right? It has to be founded in somebody who is greater than who I am. And that's God, right? But in terms of um, when we were talking about earlier about doing good, it brought me to, um, I thought about Galatians um, 6, when it talks about, um, uh, let us not- Oh, that's what it is. Right. Let us not go weary of doing good, Mm -hmm. for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. And oftentimes- When in in due season- when? In due season, in due season, <laughs> right? Determined so by God. Determined our by God. Season <laughs> on this channel is different, right? My season is not your season. Your season is not my season. I can't mm-hmm. look at your race and say, "Wait a minute, how how he got all the way up there, or how he got that little extra boost of something to get all the way up there." Mm-hmm. My race is different, right? So I think for me, that puts in perspective 
it, it helps me to put things in perspective, right? And it's not about what I want and when I want it, but it's about what the work, what kind of work God is doing. And do I want to work where he, where work is actually done good or I'm trying to get a shortcut? And I think we have to kind of reconcile and kind of take our hand off the wheel or, um, you know, kind of let him guide us in the race more so than trying to take control. I think a lot of, at least for me, we have a problem with, um, being in control all the time of the whole situation and the race is never going to get to where it needs to get if we don't take our hands off of the the the, the, the steering wheel so to be to be honest you know I, I like this conversation but i think we're overlooking something that i feel like is important especially as christians mm -hmm. the reality is that we all have the ability to be persistent but the fact is that a lot of us don't want to 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 be or it is difficult for us to be persistent in the things that god wants us to do mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you know when rob was when rob was when when rob was pursuing me he was persistent right because he you know what he wanted you made it easy you knew what she was when, oh. when was pursuing me, he was he was persistent right when right. when I wanted to, you know, to get a job, when I was looking for a job, I was persistent. I got as many rejections as, you know, as probably other people are used to getting, but it didn't it didn't stop me. It might have been discouraging but me, but I kept looking because I wanted a job. Yeah. But you know, the 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 issue is, and you know, we're Christians, but we're all and, and we are human, and so we have to have this conversation about not not being persistent or not wanting to be persistent in the things that God wants us to do. And one of the things that I wanted to bring up was um, there's a text in Exodus um, chapter 18, verse 23. And the context is that Moses is leading the people and you know how stubborn the children of Israel were. And so he's having a conversation. God is telling him, instruct him to do all these things. He's having a conversation with his father-in-law and, you know, um, Moses was not the most articulate person and he was very timid. And so, you know, you have that combination plus a bunch of headstrong people, gotcha. mm -hmm. which is what you have to deal with in church leadership Ooh. as, a, as <laughs> a church leader. <laughs> and, wow. you know, so it's like, well, how do you, how do you deal with it? And, and yeah. his father, his father-in-law says, if thou shalt do this thing and, um, and God commanded thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure and all this people shall also go to their place in peace, mm -hmm. right? And so like the thing that really stuck out to me about that is, you know, his father-in-law is essentially saying, if God is the one who told you to do this, right? Um, like this is, if you do, if you are obedient um, to what God commanded you to do, then you're going to have the ability to, to make it through whatever is presented before you. Um, and, you know, and, and all will be well. I just think that the issue is that a lot of us don't really want, aside, I, don't, I think it's, sometimes it can be fear, but a lot of us don't, are like really half-hearted in our work? commitment with God. We so, really don't want to do the work, exactly. Right. That's why, said, that's why I move back around to the, the kind of wordplay on having a mind outside of self, right? A mind outside of yourself because having the mind of Christ gives you a focus beyond your present situation. Mm -hmm. The thing Anderson, you dropped the definition on us, right? Persisting regardless of obstacles and circumstances. There are some things legitimately, let's keep it a buck, that come before your way that the common person would say, yo, it's, it makes all sense for you to give up. Mm -hmm. right? the, the average person will say, nah, you, you can rest it down right here, right? But the thing is, what if God gives you the command that this is going to be overcome? Like, I think of Joshua. One of my guys, one of my favorite guys. And I love him because he was a young cat. And the Lord says to him in Joshua 1, 9, my favorite scripture, do not be discouraged or dismayed, right? Or have I not told you, do not be discouraged or dismayed um, because your Lord, your God is going to be with you. He gave him the command to stay strong and courageous. But he didn't Three make, times. he didn't say like, oh, and by the way, when you go into the land of Canaan, it's going to be all roses and lollipops and rainbows and unicorns, right? There's this idea that I think even mentally Joshua has to persist beyond the obstacles, but his only his ability to do so was based on the command, as Susan's saying, mm -hmm. that he got, which is the mind outside of himself, mm -hmm. right? Because if it was up to him, just like these homeboys when they went into the land of um, 
the land of Canada the first time and they spied it out. They all came back like, yo, these cats make us look like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And Caleb and Joshua were like, but he told us that this is ours. So let's do this. You know, like, I think their ability to persist was because they had a thought. They had a perception that was beyond themselves. You know, so like when we run, you know, like when you think about the person you're gonna be, is my real example. When I think about, you know, my lung capacity, when like, when I get this record, that's greater. It's actually taking mind out of self in the moment, the burning in the side, the stitches, the splints in the leg, right? The the weight of it all, it takes me beyond that moment, which allows me to run. That's my thought. Yeah. And so one thing that that um, I wanted to mention, which my sister actually brought up, is the idea that um, not only is it, are we like running because we, we are... Um, aiming to be a better person or like we're growing into what it is that Christ has called us to be. We're also running for other people. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. um, we're um, at the end of um, Hebrews 11, where it says that mm -hmm. all these having attained, having not attained because they without us should not be made perfect. Right. So there are other people who have who have perfectly run the race, but they're waiting for us to get to the finish line so that we can all receive our rewards together. I agree. Rob, if you, I don't know, you didn't read um, the Hebrews 1 to 40. I did it. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the framing. I did it. That's the framing for our entire I know. You want you mind reading it? Yeah, yeah. Um, Go ahead. Okay. Hebrews, uh, as I am vamping because it's not actively up on my screen. Hebrews 12, 1, one two. 4. All right, everybody. Mm -hmm. This is actually, this is the, the, the scripture that's framing our entire week. My bad. I was excited to chop it up. Um, I'm going to read from the Amplified Version because I love it. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses mm -hmm. who by faith have testified yeah. to the truth of mm -hmm. God's absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us, let us run with endurance and active persistence. I want to talk about that word active. Active persistence, the race that is set before us looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of faith, the first incentive for our belief and the one who brings our faith to maturity, who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority, the completion of his work. Just consider and meditate on him who endured from sinners such bitter hostility against himself. Consider it all in comparison with your trials so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. All right. So um, just in, just, I want you to read that because it goes directly into what Susan was talking about, yeah. especially the first part where he talks about there's a cloud of witnesses that are around you. So you're running this race of salvation for your salvation, but you're also, there's other people around us who is watching us and how we run the race, right? And it also influences them and how they run their race and how they view God. And I think it speaks to how the accountability for not just of, our, not just of ourselves, but yeah. of, of, also of others who are, may not be in the same space where we are running our race, but maybe on a different journey, but they're also watching us, right? So we don't wanna ruin our witnesses by do by not being um, diligent and not being um, obedient to Christ on our race. So I think to what Susan is saying, we have to be mindful of the witnesses and the people who are around us. Um, so yeah. Yeah, Anderson, you have some? I, I thought you um, just, <laughs> just sitting here agreeing with everything that you guys are saying. Um, you know, Philippians 3.14 says- Hey, that's what I'm on. I press on. I press on forward to uh, the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Um, first, you guys, we we had a discussion a couple of weeks ago in this in another session where we talk about being responsible for others, and Christians we're definitely responsible for others. I don't like it. We don't like it. <laughs> we we may not like it. It's to be a solo mission, but it's not. At the end of the day, if we say we represent God and we fail to persist and we fail to endure, then what we have told whoever is watching us is that, yo, God, it, he can't do it. So don't even bother go there. That's, what, that's, that's, that's really what we're saying. 
is, is God isn't capable. That God we be praising on Sabbath or Sunday morning, that God that we be calling out on, our actions show whether what we say is true or not. Um, so if we're if we're here saying woe is me and so on and so forth, and we're not showing the faith that we say we have, then why should anybody else want to come to this God that we make seem weak and uh, um, incapable of doing for us? So we do God a big disservice when we don't persist. Um, when it comes to Philippians four. Philippians 3.13, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Once again, you guys pointed out that this isn't about our ability to, it's about what, what we can do in God. It's, it's all about in God. Um, and that's, that's the great part about having to persist. You don't have to do it on your own. It's not on your own strength. It's not on your own merit. It's in God, in Christ. It's all about you and Christ. You don't have to walk the walk by yourself. And I mean, the other thing that, that kind of comes out with what you're talking about, um, Anderson, is that persistence is a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, so we can choose to persist and we can choose to endure because we give, we've been given that by God. Once we are committed to him, he has given us the ability. Um, the Bible says in, in um, our weakness, then he's made strong, yep. you know? And so, so we have, we have to make a decision, but the thing that I kind of wanted to, to think about tonight too, is that I feel like we're, we're doing a lot of figurative speaking here, talking about running a race and enduring. What does that really look like? Personally. Okay. I appreciate you asking that question because I got two scriptures. That is an example. And for me, I think that's tied into the word active. We read the, the Hebrew um, version, we read the Amplified, and it said active persistence. And I was like, isn't that kind of redundant? Like, I need to actively persist. But here's the thing I think Christians passively persist and therefore fail often, right? Mm. The persistence for the Christian is church every weekend. Man. Passive persistence for the Christian is the word received from the pulpit, mm. right? But not studied for themselves. Passive, per, passive persistence for the Christian is their mama's faith. But that's not active persistence because you can't, you can't survive with passive persistence. <laughs> Technically, I'm saying you ain't really done nothing, right? You think you're doing something, but you haven't done anything at all. Mm. So I think active persistence, for example, in Ephesians 6, um, 18, with all prayer and petition, pray with specific requests at all times, at all times, on every occasion, in every season in the spirit. And with this in view, stay alert with all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer for all of God's people. So, honestly, active persistence for me is sometimes I know I got to just pray, like always pray, like, mm -hmm. pray, 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 like, uh, there, there are some things that, you know, he says in the word that cannot be moved without prayer and fasting. There are some things that I, I literally only overcame because I had actively put my mind in, in like a mode of prayer. Like, Lord, come on, you, you know, like I'm tired of this. You got to do this. And it's that, that constant speak, that constant, you know, coming at the enemy with like, nah, or the Lord said I can overcome. The Lord said I can be victorious. The Lord said I can do this all the time, right? Um, even a time when I was, uh, there are two times, two examples. One time I had experienced anxiety, which is something I don't, I honestly can say I really don't, but I did in this moment. And I had to slow myself down and pray like, Lord, what is happening right now? Like, Lord, no. And my action of praying, right? Believing that this is what for a moment allowed me to persist past the situation. That's one. And the second time was kind of like Alexia's point. I ran for like a, a distance that I hadn't been used to running. Mm -hmm. And I had told myself I was not going to slow down to a walk. It's a little man pride, but I said I wasn't going to slow down to a wall. I recited and repeated every song and every scripture. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> you pulled it out. And I'm telling you, like, the, the, y'all know who run. Like, you got the stitches in your side. And I, I just, I can do all things who cross your strength in me. Do all things who cross your strength in me. And I'll tell you, I made it. But for me, it was an example of what active persistence looks like. So I think mm -hmm. that's an example of active persistence. Mm -hmm. um, I have an example for me. Um... And it's a, it's not something that's done yet. So it's like still being in. Okay, you still persistent. It's right still, still persistent. And um, 
uh, and you, you, uh, Rob and Susan may also know a little bit about this, but in terms of, you know, my brother, he was, you know, he's been living in New York for a minute. And if anyone who's lived in New York knows the New York lifestyle, specifically the Bronx and how it can have a, uh-uh, uh-uh. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's very dangerous. <laughs> here. It's it can have Brooklyn. a certain impact. It can have a certain impact on young men, right? Um, especially yeah. if they don't have proper examples to show mm-hmm. them the way. And it's been a journey and a heartache for my mom. So if anybody's listening, please pray with us for my brother and for God to continue to keep him. But for me, I don't, I think that's like a living, my mom is like a living testimony of what active persistence is and endurance is because a love of a child, I can't understand. I understand the love of a sister who is seen um, you know, her brother in a particular space and wants to say, but that heartache and that um, that desire for you wanting your child to be in a better place, I can't understand it. And to see the persistent prayer, um, the persistent love, the persistent and enduring the heartache that that comes with from my mom is like a living example of what that is. And low key, I'm just like, Maybe parenting isn't for me, you know, but, <laughs> but, um, but it, it also shows me how God in, in moments where um, God has, she has shared that God has given her peace in this journey mm. um, to continue to pray for his, for her son um, and to not give up hope because it can seem so um, never ending, right? It can seem like, okay, so when God are you going to deliver? When God are you going to change the situation? It can just take a snap of a finger for you to change it around. Why aren't you doing it? But she she keeps, you know, going down on her knees. I'm like Job still daily. I haven't seen the deliverance or I haven't seen the 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 goodness yet. But I'm good. She's gonna still go down on her knees and still pray, still cook the food for him to come home and eat. Cause Loki, I'm like, you wanna act crazy? You ain't gonna eat no food in my house. You ain't gonna that's me, you know. But to see that she's still being faithful for what God is called her to do in this situation, for me, that's like a live, you know, example of persistence for me. So yeah. wow. I'm going to talk a, a little bit, and this is, you know, like in, in, in like be, I'm being very transparent here. Um, yeah, and, floor, where, and where I struggle with persistence. Um, and that's in relationships. Um, and, and specifically relationships with difficult people. She's going to persist here today, y'all. We <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm joking. Um, you know. It's really, it's relationships with difficult people, you know, with people who are, could be family members or even friends who at times I felt like maybe did, did me wrong Mm. or hurt me. And, you know, the Bible talks about if, if, you know, you, if, if someone offended you, you go to them and you talk to them and you do what you, you got to do. It literally goes through all these stuff that you do you know, in order to, to make things right with them. And that is something that, you know, I need to hold myself more accountable for because for me, I'm just like, again, yo, forget that. Like, it's just too much energy. You know, it's too, it, it, I, I do not, I, I, you know, we're reading now that we have the, the, the capability of enduring. I am not enduring, <laughs> you know, like I'm not, I'm not enduring and, I, and I'm not being persistent and in that situation, what are you enduring? I'm not. That's what I'm saying. No, but what what because you endure enduring would be enduring would be in spite of you know the the, um, the, the potential shame that you may feel or, or the disrespect, right? Yeah, yeah. In spite of it being ignored or in spite of you know being blamed that you know I'm the cause of the problem without taking responsibility. You know, like those are things that I would be enduring, and I'm just like, no, nah, I'm not going to deal with that. Mm. But but I'm convicted, you know, even in having this conversation that that is not what God, has, what, what we have been instructed to do by God, and you know? So, and so with, I'm sorry, just really quickly, when we talk about what persistence and endurance looks like, you know, I feel like in this situation, it would mean me going the extra mile and being, being humbled 
you know, and it not being about me, like Anderson said earlier, like it's not about me and it, it's about allowing Christ to dwell in me and allowing him to take over. And that's the key, man, is <laughs> you see, as humans, we want to deal with things ourselves in our way. But when Christ takes over, he measures how much we could take. He tells us how much to deal with. He tells us when to cut it off. He Amen. tells us when to let it go. He's the one. Um, the thing is, when he does it, we know we're good. When we do it, we do it um, out of anger, out of frustration, um, or whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. Bible tells us that we should bear with one another, right? Um, and that's something that, that for me, I find difficult because if I get your nonsense, at least let me be able to knock you out once in a while. That's all I'm saying. See, there's some, there's some Brooklyn people, right? That no, <laughs> no, no, that's, that's, right? That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying, Anderson. That's, but I'm being real. Like, you get so frustrated to the point where it's just like, yo, like, Rob, we were talking the other day, and I told, Rob and I were, and Stefan were talking, and I'm like, yo, I feel like I got to fight one of my friends, yo. <laughs> real, I got to, I feel like the only way we're going to solve this problem is if I fight this dude. Um, but, you know the the Bible does tell us to bear with one and bear with one another. That takes persistence. Um, uh, another uh, and I'm gonna use another biblical example of persistence. So we look we look at Matthew 15 21 to 28, right? And Christ is I forgot exactly where where he was, but we have this woman who had a daughter who was demon possessed. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. She's, she's enduring her demon-possessed daughter, and she's, act, she, she's also practicing active persistence. Christ may not have been the first time she went to somebody for help. Right. She, he was probably, she, she was probably doing it from before, but she went to Christ this time, and she approaches him, and she's calling him, and he ignores her. He says nothing. He heard her, but he says nothing. He doesn't even respond. Rude. He continues. Rude. Disciples like, listen, master, please send her away. She, she keeps coming after us. Send her away. Then she keeps going. Like, he's still not responding. The disciples are saying send her away. She keeps going. And then uh, finally Christ responds. And he's like, you know, what's meant for the children shouldn't go to the dogs. I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> Shady. He called her a bee. That is the biblical <laughs> response to call somebody a bee. That's shady. That's he's like, you know, what's meant for the children shouldn't go to the dogs. But her response, her response, but even the dogs, the crumbs, yeah, the crumbs, the crumbs was good enough for her. She persisted. She persisted in that situation, um, and she was blessed because of her persistence. She was willing to take. She, she was like, I don't want the whole loaf. I don't even want a piece of the loaf. Give me the crumbs. I'll take that. That's enough. Her faith, her persistence, because of her faith in this man, in, in, in the God man, in Christ, reaped her her blessing. Her child was, was freed of that demon possession. That active, um, Rob spoke earlier about praying and continuing to pray. Mm -hmm. What happens is for me, um, one of my biggest issues in being persistent was prayer because I felt like I was bothering God, right? I felt like, <laughs> yo, you already prayed about this, leave it alone. Like he'll take care of it because you, you get this idea in your mind that if you ask God once, he heard it and he'll take care of it in his time. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought, right? And I'm not saying he doesn't hear it, but mm -hmm. check out what, check out what, um, if we look at Luke, um, Luke 18, one through eight, where Jesus tells them a parable. Um, so it says, and he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said in a certain city, so this parable, and I just wanted to read that part real quick, but this parable talks about, there's a judge who, you know, didn't fear God, didn't um, mm -hmm. didn't respect man or whatever the case is. Um, but there's also this lady who wanted justice against her adversary. She kept on going to this judge, going to this judge, going to this judge, going to this judge until he says, listen, 
I'm just going to hear her out, hear this case out, because she's going to keep bothering me, right? The thing is, God doesn't have a problem with us bothering him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your kids asking for something that they need, it shouldn't anger us. It shouldn't make parents feel any type of way. They're simply asking for what they need. So having that idea of, you know, I'm bothering God, I'm bothering God, mm-hmm. keep me from really being persistent in prayer. When I learned that it wasn't a botheration, I mean a bother to him, Hang around too many. Too Listen, many we, we create our own words. Hello, <laughs> we have our own dictionary. <laughs> uh, being that it wasn't a, a it, when I learned it wasn't a bother, everything now. Like I'm in God's air about the same thing about 20 times a day because I know that He wants to hear that. For me, um, that was my biggest. Op, one of my biggest obstacles mm-hmm. in my walk was my persistence in prayer because I felt like, oh, you know what? I don't want to bother God too much. Mm-hmm. I wanted to say really quickly that I understand um, you re- like that story kind of reminded me with the whole persistence thing kind of reminded me of back in Genesis where Jacob is is wrestling with the yeah. And the thing that really sticks out to me is like, how many of, of us are that persistent that we're like, mm. I don't care if I come out of this lane, um, this age, you're going to give me my blessing. Yep. No, I don't know if I'm on that level yet. So, I, well, go ahead, Alexia. Uh, no, I, I, I want it. I, I think everything what you guys, especially about persistence for me, what's really just sticking out is like, I think Susan talked about it earlier, is like the why is the why in every situation. Why am I being persistent? The lady, mm-hmm. she's being persistent because she wants the deliverance from the, her demon-possessed child. The other lady, because she wanted deliverance from the person who was um, tormenting her. Jake, Jacob, he wanted the blessing, right? You even think about, um, <laughs> you even think about Elijah, Elijah, Elisha, right? And Elijah in, their, in, that, in that situation where, you know, God was sending Elijah everywhere, all over. And everybody keep, kept saying to Elijah, you know, God's going to take him, right? You know, mm-hmm. like there's this, this little distraction here and there, and they're trying to distract him. And he's like, yeah, okay, all right, just shut up. What I, I'm going to keep going. Because he already knew what he wanted. He already knew what he was going to get at the end of this. Even at, And it's crazy because even when um, Elijah asked him, what is it that he wanted? He's he told him what he wanted, and then Elijah still said, "Okay, if you see me, you get it. If you don't, you just know you don't." And he still, you know, had the faith, and he still was, you know, standing there watching and and being persistent to get in that blessing that he wanted to get. So it's like, what is the why? Is the why is our why the our salvation for the, in the end and our crown, right? But what are the whys, the little whys that we have in our situations? Mm-hmm. Hold up, um, sorry, no, live. Go ahead. Um, it's it's eight twenty four, and I knew this would happen that we would get okay. deep into it and have to wrap up. So I gotta ask y'all one question. You get two minutes or less. This is your wrap up. This is what I leave people with as it relates to persistence, as it relates to persistence. So, um, please answer this question: Why is persistence important for the Christian journey? This is your last thought. Two minutes or less. Whoever feels ready. All right. I'm going to go and I'm going to end with exactly what I was going to say. Um, we look at persistence from, we looked at persistence from the Christian aspect, right? Um, we didn't look at persistence from the adversaries aspect. The devil is very persistent in what he's doing. He's been persistent for over six, for 6,000 years. Okay. In what he's doing. He's, he hasn't given up. He knows what his faith is and he hasn't given up, Right. Um, we look at, uh, the situation with David and Goliath, Goliath, uh, came out every time at a certain times. And it's, it's the times where Israel were to worship. He disturbed their worship with his persistence to the point where they became shook of him. No one wanted to go fight him, but David being persistent in his relationship, in his pursuit of God, when he came through the camp and heard what this this dude was saying, he's like, yo, who's disrespecting my God? So like David Brooklyn came through and was like, yo, the Bronx are talking crazy. 
Wow. <laughs> wow. I heard that somewhere. I had to do it. I heard that but in um, pers- I had to do it. But we see that the devil is, if the devil is persistent, and he is in every in 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 every day, every moment of every day, he has been persistent in his. Um, in achieving his goal, which is to pull us away from God. Um, for me, what does persistence have to do with Christianity? Everything. Everything. Because once we, 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 we stop persisting, then we have lost the race. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, Susan? Alexia? Oh, um, and the question is why it's important to me. Um, no, to the Christian race. Why is persistence important for the Christian race? Two minutes. It's important. It's in, you just took away a couple seconds. It's important for me um, for, it, it, it is important that one, like to, to, to secure my connectedness to Christ, to, to God and ensuring uh, my development. Um, I think, persistence is not just for me, it's for my family, it's for my friends to show them that regardless of what life throws at you and what at, at me, and I try to be transparent in those struggles in life, that I'm he will still come through for me whatever at whatever stage, right? So persistence is not just for me in my Christian walk, but it's for others who are witnessing and seeing that, okay, she could have just given up a long time ago but there's something to this God that she keeps talking about. And that was the God that is always faithful to me, regardless of what I, what I've done. So. Um, I say it's important to the Christian work, to the Christian walk um, or the Christian race, because um, in order, you know, the, the, the definition or the meaning of, um, Christian is a follower, to be a follower of Christ, which means that we are um, his disciples. We, we are students of his. Um, and then the, in the Bible, um, in Hebrews 12, chapter, uh, verse two, sorry, chapter 12, verse two, it says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured, endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. So because Christ was persistent in what he did to save us, he's now seated, seated at the right hand of God. Mm-hmm. And in order for us to get the, the reward that Christ got, we have to be persistent. And I was going to converse, but that's my same answer. Uh, Anderson talked about one of my favorite female characters, is that woman who persisted in front of God. I think persistence is important for the Christian journey because so many of us give out, give up just before God is ready to give in for us. Mm-hmm. And I think there are so many young adults, so many people out there, myself included at times, there was a time when I was like, I can't, like, it's not worth it, right? I'm gonna do whatever I want so I can get whatever I need right now in my own power. But there's what God has for us. Even his crumbs is greater, right? Than the loaf of bread that we try to buy from the devil's store. And so that woman persisted through his silence persisted through the onlookers, their comments, spiritual leaders, religious leaders, right? And persisted um, through the direct um, contra- contradiction, right? Apparently in her request. And as a result, he looks at her and says, there are only two people in the Bible, y'all, two people in the Bible mm-hmm. who get this response. And he says, woman, you have great faith. Mm-hmm. It's done, right? And so I want us all to persist so that we can hear it's done because when you do, it's done. Um, yo, I want to thank Alexia, Anderson, um, my wife, Susan, myself. We're going to be here all week. Please tune in. I'm going to hush up and the moderators here. <laughs> awesome. This was an awesome discussion, you all. Thank you so, so much. I'm sitting here taking notes. You guys are in, in, in watching the chat on YouTube. Um, just a couple of things that, you know, some of the highlights that you guys pointed out throughout this discussion about, you know, running the race for others. It's not just about ourselves. Minding who else is around and who's watching us as we're running this race. Um, uh, Having a hard time being persistent in the things that God has asked us to do. And then what we do in God, it's not, we're not doing this alone. It's not on our own merit. It's in and with God that we need to be persistent in running this race. And then also about the choices. You know, what are the, what are the choices that we're making and that we're doing? Um, Rob, you talked about passive versus active persistence. And what does that look like on a personal level? 
Um, so all of these things, and you guys are going from Genesis to Galatians to Hebrews to Ephesians to Matthew. Um, I love the depth of this conversation. So I am so excited to tune in tomorrow as we continue this week-long discussion around the theme endurance. But tomorrow we're going to be speaking specifically on weight and what does that mean in, in, in this entire context. Okay. So for everybody that's watching, um, remember to tune in again tomorrow at 7.30 to 8.30. Um, please remember to like, subscribe, follow us on our on our YouTube channel, um, our Instagram page, Facebook page. You can also watch us via um, the Metropolitan SCA Church platform as well. So remember to pass on all the information about what, what's going on here and what we're doing. So welcome. Uh, thank you so much. And we welcome you guys back tomorrow night. Hi, everybody. Bye. Have a good one. Peace.